Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice in it and be glad. I know you probably said this early in the morning, just get to it. Well, before we get to it, I want you to do me a favor. If you'll push the share button and wake somebody up and let them know that you want to help them in setting their day. So if you'll push that share button, everybody that comes on, just push the share button. Push the share button and share the word of the Lord. I'm so excited. This is our first opportunity in order to share some word early in the morning. I did not bring my coffee. I need to get my coffee. Uh, next time I'll have my coffee because it helps me to rise up early in the morning also. But I want to share a word with you. I shared a little snippet of it um, some time ago. And this little snippet was just to whet your um, appetite concerning what God is doing in this season, in this time. And I think it's going to be very helpful for you when you go throughout your day on today um, because we need to hear what God is saying. So if you'll just come on and just push that uh, share button another time so that other individuals know that we are speaking, speaking a word on this morning. All right, let's begin. I won't be before you long or I won't be with you long. I just want to share a word with you. During this time of intense and diverse distractions, we must practice, practice the discipline of our minds even while you're in the midst of distractions. Something we must understand, and that is our obstacles are not external, but they are internal. Our obstacles are not external, but they're internal. The Bible says from Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. When we look at that word heart, that word heart, is defined as mind. It is the mind. So then when we look at it as mind, Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, it says, Thou, or God, will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed. Stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Well, Isaiah writes, that the reward of a stayed, the reward of a focused mind, gets the benefits of peace. Now, when we talk about a stayed mind, a focused mind, it is a disciplined mind. It is a mind that is not just disciplined, but that means I'm going to manage my mind. Not only am I going to manage my mind, but I'm going to steward my mind. I'm going to govern my mind. I'm going to um, allow God. I'm going to control my own mind. You said, how in the world can you control your own mind? You've got to be controlled by God. Understand this. I've made this statement several times, and I still believe it to be true. And that is, while you may not be able to stop the bird from landing on your head, you sure can stop him from building a nest in your head. I know you could think of somebody right now that's allowed a bird to build a nest in their head. Now, how do you know the bird has built a nest in their head? The reason you know is because not only has something come to their mind, but they wake up in the morning talking about what we should have did, what we should have done, what we should have said, and on and on and on. And not only waking up in the morning to do it, but they go throughout the day saying that I could have said this and shut them down. I could have said that and stopped that whole thing. That's because they have allowed this bird to build a nest in their head. So practicing the discipline of our minds is to get perfect peace. And the practice of perfect peace is to practice dismissing distractions. You said, I tried that and it just don't work. Well, watch this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dismissing distractions in our minds does not 
begin and end with us saying, Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. And cussing out our thoughts. It begins with purpose. And purpose immediately dismisses unnecessary diversions over and over and over again and ends with peace. Hmm. He said, I said it once. Um, I'm reminded of a woman of God who made the statement, um, Bishop Wynell Freeman, and that is that repetition, repetition is necessary. Repetition is um, the mother, it is the mother of, of learning, of understanding. Hmm. Now, we have to practice constantly repeating what the word of the Lord declares. Dismissing distractions begins and it ends with disallowing things to enter our intentional, our minds through our ports of authority. You said, what are your ports of authority? Well, our ports of authority are eye gate, our ear gate, our mouth gate, touch gate, and even smell gate. So then, watch this. So Paul says, if the resistance, if the fight begins with the internal, my mind, then it must end with my mind too. Somebody said, why are you getting so excited at 5 a.m. in the morning? Uh, let me share this. Anytime the word of the Lord um, touches you first, it, it it moves you, it drives you. It drives you to make sure that others understand and receive what you have received. So let's go to the word of God. So Paul writes in Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse four and five. And it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And it says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So in other words, I can't leave my mind to its own governance. I must give it over to the law of God. Psalms 1 verse 2 and 3. It says, but my delight must be in the law of God. And in his law, I should meditate day and night. Verse three. And then I will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now watch this. We can inadvertently give permission or allow the enemy and things to slip through any one of our gates. Mm. Now when it slips through any one of our gates, if we are controlling and if we are watching what gets into our spirit, you'll notice when something new has entered one of your gates. Watch this. Whenever a thing enters through these ports, it has the authority to inhabit our minds for good or for bad. It can bring about a negative response or it can bring about a positive response. It is in the mind that we wrestle with the carnal and the spiritual warfare. Because we have the power to choose, we find ourselves engaged in the daily battle of deciding between life and death. You say, what do you mean the daily battle? It is a daily battle every day. We're battling with whether to choose life or whether they choose death. Now, how do we battle with that? The Bible says 
Romans chapter 8 and verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The end time battle is a battle fought and defeated through the intellect in the spirit realm, not in the natural. I'm going to say that again because somebody didn't get that. You just cleared your eyes. And when you cleared your eyes, you missed. You know, we have a hard time trying to do one thing and the other at the same time. Well, let me repeat it again. The end time battle is a battle fought and defeated through the intellect in the spirit realm, not in the natural. So dismissing fear, dismissing fear of voice distractions is as much self-discipline or denying the lesser to gain the greater as it is watching the port authorities of our minds. Let that sink in right there. Okay. God has invested in us the responsibility of the management of mind, which belongs to him, the mind that belongs to him. So Proverbs declares to keep thy heart. That word heart means mind again. Keep the central location of your everything. Keep your feeling. Keep your intellect regarded as fragile. I want to say this. When we are guarding our minds, those of you that are mothers, uh, even grandmothers, aunties, that have had the pleasure of holding a newborn baby, even it being yours, you are careful about who comes in the proximity of that new baby and where you lay that new baby. You would not knowingly, and if you could not help it, you wouldn't knowingly lay that baby in the arms of somebody who is dirty or lay that baby in a dirty crib a dirty bassinet. That's the same way that the word of God is speaking concerning our minds. Watch where you put your minds. Don't lay your mind down in a dirty place. Hmm. Keep your heart and your mind. Solomon here was speaking concerning putting perimeters around your mind. Hmm. Be careful where you put your mind. The Bible declares from 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. And I want to share with you from the English Standard Version. It says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion that is raised against the knowledge of God. And take every thought captive to obey Christ. How do we destroy these arguments? How do we destroy these voices? We counteract them with truth. Hmm. Again, how do we destroy these arguments, these voices? We counteract it with truth. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. Watch this. I'm going to show you something in this word. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. This is the English Standard Version. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden. Let's move along here. But of the tree, verse 17, of the knowledge of good and evil, ye shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, ye shall surely die. Verse 18. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Verse 21. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. N not right now. Okay, come on back. A deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up his place or its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from man, he made it into a woman and brought her to the man. Now watch this, chapter 3, only a few verses. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, 
Did God actually say, you shall not eat of the tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that's in the midst of the garden. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. I'm working on my, my voice uh, changes. Uh, uh, look, verse 4. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So you said, what does that have to do with dismissing, uh, dismissing thoughts, dismissing distractions? Watch this. Genesis shares an important tactic to dismissing the voices of fear. The key to dismissing distractions is to not entertain the preliminary conversation. You see that? You cannot entertain the preliminary conversation. Eve heard by way of concerning what God said, and she did not get clarity before she left the conversation. So she put herself in a place of vulnerability, and he said, she said. I hear the Bible say from Matthew, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which is sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Watch this. The serpent with the subtle thought knew that he got his foot in the door when he questioned Eve and discerned her contemplating that she was unsure of what she was talking about because she said, lest or maybe we die instead of we will die. The serpent smelled misunderstanding and a sense of nervous fear and not reverential fear. <coughs> Excuse me. We lose the battle. We lose the battle for dismissing distractions when we entertain the questioning or rationality of a thing. When an adversary or with an adversary or our ju or justifying mind that wants to believe or do the opposite of right. So Satan addressed her nervous fear with the possibility of never having to be afraid again because you can be autonomous. You can have the power or the right to govern. You don't have to be at the whim of your inabilities anymore. And she bit it. She bit into the thought. So after the tasting, the tasting is where we see the distortion of relationships of all things, spiritual, and natural. When we look for shades of gray or areas, areas where what God has said on any subject and we dialogue when we don't want to comply, we're right where Eve stood. So we can no longer say, uh, Eve, you shouldn't have done that because we've been in that place before ourselves and we're probably in that place right now. And that is that we've entertained someone speaking for too long and has changed our whole mindset on what God has said or what truth is. So Corinthians warns us, and I'm getting ready to close. Corinthians warns us that the premier war that we have to fight is battling against what exalted itself against the knowledge of God that we already hold in our hearts, our minds. What am I saying? Just say no. Just say no over and over and over and over and over again. Wake up and say no. Mm. So Paul later writes in reference to the act in Genesis 2 Corinthians 11, 3. And he says, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. 
Paul uses Genesis as an analogy to show how your mind as Eve can and will be deceived by the constant conversing with false truth. So he says in Galatians chapter one, but though we are an angel from heaven, uh, somebody said Galatians chapter one, verse what? Galatians chapter one and verse eight. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any of the gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. We must address the voice of fear over and over and over and over and over and over again with truth. I'm closing right there. But I want to say that again. Maybe you'll hear later in the day me singing the tune. We must address the voice of fear over and over and over and over again with truth. Come on, pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, dear God, for your word in which we have heard early this morning. Don't allow it to leave our hearts. Don't allow it to leave our minds. But God, allow it to encourage us throughout the day. And whenever we begin to think about what we could have said, what we could have done, what we should have said, that would have shut it down and would have gave you a piece of my mind and would have let you know, God, take us back to the word that we heard this morning to understand that if I'm going to get a hold and get a grasp and have peace, I must dismiss it over and over again. Don't let Satan get control of it. And God, we declare and decree that it is done. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if this word has been a blessing to you, I'm going to ask if you would sow a seed into this hour of early rising bread. You can go to dollar sign Krista M. Tyson, dollar sign K-R-I-S-T-A M T Y S O N, dollar sign Krista M. Tyson. Now, you said I got up this morning to hear a word, not to sow a seed. Let me share with you that any time that we sow a seed into what blessed us, it can flourish fruit in our lives, flourish a tree in our lives. Plant a seed. If you can't plant a seed, say a prayer. And we will see you again on Saturday morning at 5 a.m. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may his face smile upon you and give you his peace. Bye-bye.